Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. I'm your host, Bill Hoffman, and this week's show is all about quality trophy pictures of your harvests. Welcome to Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Hi, this is Jerry Widener with Hunter Safety System, and you're listening to Bill Hoffman on Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. And here we are back after that great introduction. Again, my name is Bill Hoffman. I'm your host here on the Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Last week, we kind of, well, I guess it wasn't last week. It was a couple shows ago. Things kind of get jumbled up in the world here, especially during hunting season. But a few episodes ago, we congratulated you and told you... Our system, or I should say my system, for processing your deer and aging the meat and hanging it to get the best tasting venison. That venison is a great reminder of the hunt. It is a great way to look back and to flood the memories, everything that went into harvesting, setting up the stands, dragging the deer out, and and all the way up through the cooking, and then enjoying the greatest reward of all, the flesh of the animal. After that venison is gone, what do we have left? We have the memories. And one of the greatest things that can help preserve or even refresh those memories are great pictures of the you know, the harvest or the, the kill. Now, a lot of people these days are videoing their hunts. So you've got those videos. But still, having those videos might not be the best way to share your success with those uh, who you're maybe friends with on social media or even people that you bump into around town. So that is where this episode comes in. We're talking about trophy photos. Now, let's be careful with the word trophy. The word trophy, yeah... Uh, The trophy is in the eye of the beholder. If it's a trophy to you is what I mean. But everybody can take a trophy photo even if the deer's not a trophy. So you still took that deer's life. You still um, should be proud of your accomplishment. You should still be willing to brag it up. Now, I'm going to give you 10 things that will help you, 10 steps, 10 uh, things to think about that will help you take a true trophy photo. And a couple of these I'm going to get a little preachy on just because it's my personal opinion. But a lot of them, they really will help you submit the memory of a lifetime into photographic form. So number 10 is going to be lighting. Now, of course, we hunt at dusk, (laughs) both in the morning and in the evening. If you happen to shoot your deer and get it Uh, all prepped and ready for your pictures in the morning, you don't have as much issues with lighting as you do with an evening hunt. Uh, You can actually pull off great looking photos in the dark. However, it's harder to do. And I, as a general rule, seriously just suggest you wait to the next day. There's no there's no difference in that <laughs> in that deer's antler size after it's been hanging all night. Of course, you can take some snaps and send them to friends and stuff, but we're talking about creating real pure, good-looking, true trophy photos. And but you know, I kind of skipped ahead because I I forgot to mention the why. Why do we want to take these? Well, the reason for me 
wanting to take trophy photos is to show some reverence, to show some respect for the animals that we harvest. But that also is to show, to be proud of our harvest in a, oh, I don't want to say socially acceptable, but in a clean and and respectful way. You know, there's a lot of non-hunters maybe on your Facebook friends list. And, you know, obviously if you're listening to the show, you're a hunter and you might be of the the opinion to say, ah, screw the non-hunters. We're not going to change their minds anyway. That's probably true. Maybe not, but probably. But even the the non hunt there might be non hunters that still support our way of life and maybe it turns them off. And again, uh it's just there's there's no need to have gory pictures. I guess that's it's what I'm looking for. We are hunters, we see it, we know the act of hunting involves blood, but there are some steps, some easy steps we can do to help minimize that for the non hunting public. And why would we want to do that? Let's not forget in most states when it comes to hunting regulation and hunting related issues, it's voted upon. So there's no need. You're never going to change an an anti-hunter's mind, okay? But what you can do is you can stop people from becoming anti-hunters by showing who we are as sportsmen, and what respect and reverence we have for our animals. Okay, that's the why. So number 10, lighting. And I'm just going to go ahead and say it, daytime only. You know, for trophy photos, (laughs) for the vast majority majority of us, daytime is going to be the best time. Just wait overnight, let it hang, get it down, and then you can move on to the rest of the steps. But having natural light is going to fulfill so many of the obligations we have when it comes to taking trophy pictures. Number nine is scenery. Now, this one is kind of goes along with the why. Scenery can be a whole mix of things. It's easier for me to tell you what not to do than it is for me to tell you what to do. What you should not do. Listen to me, people. This is what you should not do. The deer pictures should not be in the back of your pickup truck. They should not be on your cement barn floor. Okay? You didn't kill the deer in the back of your pickup truck. Well, maybe you did if it was a car accident, but even after that, you wouldn't be taking trophy photos. You did not kill that deer on your cement barn floor. You did not kill that deer in the bucket of your loader. Come on, guys. You've you, we are better than this. If you shot the deer in a cornfield, take the picture in a cornfield. If you shot the deer in the woods, take the picture in the woods. Now, like I said, you're probably going to take the deer home and bring it back in the sun up when the sun's up the next day. If you don't want to do that, there's nothing wrong with a backyard shot. Depending on the angles, you can play with it. You can have a nice bush behind you. You can have a tree behind you. You can make it look better than just some dude in the back of his truck it just it drives me crazy of course those pictures are okay to take and send to your friends but we're talking about posting on social media we're talking about sharing two true trophy photos all right so that is number nine scenery number eight is angles and this is kind of a personal preference some people prefer something uh some per- people prefer another thing Here's a a good suggestion. You are always better off being lower than you think you should be as far as the camera goes. So some people say you should be below the deer's eyes, and some people say um, a little bit higher. I think there's a happy medium here. I think you, wherever the hunter's sitting, or or, yeah, you should be sitting, wherever the hunter's sitting, okay, or kneeling, or, or even standing, you take his eyes, And then you find the buck's eyes and you take the buck's eyes and you split the difference. And that's where you start snapping pictures. Okay. And you just go lower from there. And what that's going to do is it takes, it helps a lot with what we talked about the scenery. Okay. It helps a lot with, um, you know, just, just a whole, it helps with cropping and framing the picture. And it just helps show off the deer's antlers better because from a straight up view or a higher up view, um, you can take a couple that way, take a couple that way and compare them to the lower view and your eyes will, will tell you what's right. The angle makes a big difference. Okay. 
Number seven. Number seven. Oh, this one is uh this one is a bugaboo of mine. And I, I have it titled Cleanup. Number seven is cleanup. Yeah, that means tuck the animal's tongue back in its mouth. It's that simple. Tuck the animal's tongue back in its mouth, or if the rigor mortis is set in and you can't get it back in there, just cut the damn thing off. It doesn't matter. You're not going to eat it. You don't need it for taxidermy, most likely. Just tuck the deer's tongue back in its mouth. It's There's nothing more unsettling than seeing a beautiful picture ruined by a deer's tongue sticking out. Not only that, let's go ahead and let's... You know, I have a pack of wet wipes, you know, just in case, you know, nature calls in my hunting packet all the time. But those wet wipes work great for cleaning off the blood from the deer's muzzle. If you've shot a deer, if you've double lunged it or even single lunged it, that blood's going to come up and out the nasal cavity and he's going to be bleeding from the mouth and bleeding from the nose. Just take the wet wipes and clean up that blood. The difference it makes is still staggering in the quality of your trophy photos plus it cuts down on that gore factor for non-hunters and when we talk about the gore factors for non-hunters your hands should be cleaned or gloved and not gloved in the same gloves you feel dressed with your hands should be clean not all bloody and nasty come on guys I know we're hunters, but we can do better. We can take these pictures. We can make them clean. It almost should look like you're holding up a finished taxidermy product. All right. And what kind of goes along with this cleanup is let's be smart and crop the photos so that we're not showing the guts or or we're not showing the field dress deer. If you can take pictures before field dressing, that's even better because what you actually do, you're going to take those back legs and tuck up, tuck them up under the deer and kind of make him look like he's bedded. And then you're going to sit behind him like he's bedded down. And then you can support the hand, the antlers either with a stick in the ground on the backside or with um, your, your hand as well. But my goodness gracious, if you are sitting there, nothing, nothing ruins a picture or turns off a picture person more than the tongue hanging out or the belly split wide open. It's just poor taste, guys. And again, these are trophy photos. We should treat them like true trophies. And number six, now that we've we've done the cleanup, we've got our angles figured out, we've waited for the right lighting, and we're in the perfect scenery, now we're actually going to kind of concentrate on actually setting up for the picture. And number six is going to be posing. All right. Posing, it sounds like a a photo shoot, but really, you know, that's what we're doing, guys. We are posing. So really simple with this one is don't ride the deer. You should not be straddled over the back of the deer holding its head up straight on. Come on. First of all, it looks bad. Second of all, it doesn't adequately show off the antlers. The antlers look so much better in a profile view from the side with the head just just turned straight on. I mean, it's cool and everything for for um, trail cam pictures because we can see points and we can see mass and everything. But remember, your angle is going to be down below the deer's eyes. So you want that head turned just slightly with you sitting behind the deer or in front of the deer um, with, you know, kind of in more more of a panoramic shot. Um, and there's nothing wrong with, with, do, with trying multiple poses, you know, stand, sit here, stand there, shift your weight here, roll the buck here. The different, you know, antler sides have different characteristics. Once you take the pictures on one side, hop over the deer, take the pictures on the other side. And, um, cause you've, you've, you've cleaned up the blood from the nose. You've cleaned up the blood from the shot site. You've cleaned up. He's not gutted yet. Or even if he is, you're going to crop that out. So, there's a lot you can do with just posing that will really help out. And I try my best, depending on the situation, to not be holding antlers. A lot of times you can put your head like or your hand right up under the deer's head, like up under his ear with your fingers spread out on his jaw and keep his head open. I want those antlers in full view. I don't want, you know, my <laughs> two hands 
reaching around, gripping the antlers like it's a uh, barbell that I'm getting ready to lift. All right. So that really just, it takes away from the picture. And again, we're not taking away from these pictures because they are what? Trophy pictures. Well, that's 10 through 6. So we've got 5 through 1 left. We got 1 through 5, the top 5 tips for taking trophy pictures. And the greatest thing about this episode is it's a post deer kill episode, which means if you're thinking about this type of stuff, you're already ahead of the game for when you do actually harvest your animal. So we left off at number 5. And number 5 kind of goes back to a few things that I've hinted at so far. But number five is going to be class. Show some class, guys. Take some classy pictures of a dead deer, some trophy pictures. What do I mean by class? Don't have a cigarette hanging out of your mouth. Don't have it in the bed of the truck with beer cans laying around. Don't have a beer can in your hand. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a smoke and a beer to celebrate your kill. But we are not celebrating right now. We are taking trophy pictures. Again, you have to put some thought into this, and it is a process. But honestly, it's only going to add 10 to 15 minutes to the pictures you were going to take anyway. So it really is worth the time investment to go ahead and take quality trophy pictures and inserting some class into them. And like I said, no cigarettes, no cigars, no beers, no blood-covered pants, no blood-covered hands. A lot of these things intertwine. A lot of these things intermingle. And you really can screw up a picture pretty quick by not having any class. Okay, number four, it's pictures are a numbers game. The beautiful thing is we are not using film. We are using digital media. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need a big Canon 60D. You can use those, of course. Your cell phone or your buddy's cell phone most likely takes better pictures than the digital camera I have in my pocket anyway. There's nothing wrong with using your cell phone and taking a crap load of pictures. Because <laughs> if you take a crap load of pictures... One of them's going to be a trophy picture, probably more than one if you followed all the steps I lay out in this episode, but that will overall give you the output that you are looking. Shoot lots, lots and lots of pictures and try different poses, try different angles like I suggested earlier. This is a numbers game. One of them will be perfect. Okay, uh, number three, we're kind of flying along here, but these are a little bit shorter. Number three is, um, it kind of goes with lighting, but it's, I wanted to put it back into its own thing. And I just want to say it's a tip of the cap. And what I see in a lot of photos is a big, beautiful picture of the deer. And then the hunter's face is super shaded out and you can't really see them. Because A, they're either looking down or B, they've got a hat on and they're wearing it how normally us hunters wear hats. And we wear a lot of hats. Now I'm talking about like baseball style hats, not like beanies or winter caps. But what happens is those hat brims create a shade on the face and it doesn't um, necessarily give off the best quality in a trophy picture is you can still wear your hat but just go ahead and take it and tip it up just you know maybe 20 percent up or 20 degrees up just to that point where when it's on your head it doesn't feel right you, it, you just know it right and that basically is going to let the light filter onto your face you can still have your hat on especially if it's got a sponsor on it or something like that and you can take a perfect picture still wearing your hat no need to show everybody your bed head now, why we're talking about hats and stuff, what should you be wearing? I strongly suggest you be wearing camouflage. It doesn't even have to be the camouflage that you harvest the deer in. It could be a clean set. Perhaps you've got blood on the other set or you, you shot it just in all blaze orange and you wanted to throw some camo in there. There's nothing wrong with changing your clothes or getting the right outfit or getting a clean outfit on uh, as far as that goes. But, you know, jeans and a t-shirt or 
shorts and a pair of muck boots with a uh you know a tank top on it just guys these are trophy photos treat them like it throw your camo back on and help remember the hunt the way it happened okay number two we talked about lighting we talked about tipping the cap now i did suggest you hunt, you take the pictures in the daylight but what you also should do is you should use backlight and what backlight means is that the sun should be at the hunter's back shining down through the hunter towards the camera and the reason that really is best is because um, there's no bright spots on the deer Everything will kind of be the same shade. Everything will kind of uh, be the same gradient uh, color tone. But also when you actually take the pictures, that light coming down, it creates softer edges. And softer edges are just pleasing to the eye when it comes to photography. Uh, maybe, you know, the softer edges on the rump of the deer or the fur or the way that the, uh, the light curves around the ear right behind the antler. Those are all accomplished with backlit. Now, the other thing you accomplish by doing this is you want to, and this is kind of falls into posing and stuff like that and scenery, but you want to, if at all possible, to sky the antlers. Now, what that means is you want blue sky or clouds or whatever is there, but you want sky behind the antlers if you can um, pull that off. So like, let's say like if you're taking a picture up against a hay bale and your back's against the hay bale and the deer's right in front of you, the problem with that is you're going to lose some of the antler focus and the antler images into the background being so close. Where is if you could, um, you know, be on a hill or just be angled at a point. There's nothing wrong with your photographer or your buddy with a cell phone laying down on his belly to get the right picture up at you with the light behind your back with you backlit and your antlers against the sky. Because what that really does is it really makes them stick out and the blue and the crisp sky uh, really, I, you know, I, I don't know all the words. I'm not a photographer. I just know what looks good when I see it. But yeah. Backlight, backlight your photo shoot and sky the antlers if possible. Um, this is probably a lot easier for you guys out west, I would imagine. <laughs> but um, and so that was number two. Number one, we are down to the number one tip for taking trophy photos, and it has nothing to do whatsoever with taking the photo. As far as taking the photo and having it look great. And, you know, truly be a trophy. We've covered everything that I can think of, except for this. This is very important. And this is a huge pet peeve of mine. Number one is safety. And what do I mean by safety? Okay. It drives me crazy to see a trophy photo taken where the gun is laying across the deer's body, pointing up at the hunter or hunters. Even if it's unloaded, what do they teach us in hunter safety? In every firearm safety class you ever take, what do you always do? You treat the gun like it's loaded at all times. Guys, girls, we're excited. Are you sure it's unloaded? It's laying there on the deer. You're moving the head around. You're trying to get in the perfect position. That gun could slide down the body of the deer and bump and activate the firing pin, and all of a sudden your trophy photo is a nightmare. There's nothing wrong with having the bow or the gun in the picture. Just don't point the gun at you, and don't point it at your photographer either. One safe way to do it is to be holding the gun, because when you're holding the gun, you're conscious of the muzzle direction. But having it laid across the deer and pointing up at you, or even if it's pointing away from you, it's just such an unnecessary risk. Even, you know, I've seen a lot of guys will do it and they leave the action open. And I'm one of those people that looks for that. Is the action open on, on the rifle, on the shotgun, on, you know, the muzzle loader, if it's a break open? Okay, I can see that. But still, why would you point the muzzle in the direction of you 
a friend or a loved one. It just doesn't make sense. And just that's one thing to keep in mind when you're seeing these type of pictures and after you set up your own type of picture. But that's it, guys. That is one through ten. Let's run it back. Ten, lighting. Nine, scenery. Eight, angles. Seven, cleanup. Six, posing. Five, use some class. Number four, it's a numbers game. Take lots of pictures. Number three, tip that cap up 20% and put on your camo. And number two, backlight or sky your antlers. Number one, the safety aspect of not pointing the muzzle at yourself just to take a picture. That's about it. That's going to wrap up this episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope it really does help you guys take better trophy pictures. Thanks a lot for listening to this episode, and get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. Thank you for listening to this episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. Oh,